Um, in this video I will comment on the notes that I have written while watching the debate between Slavoj Zizek and Jordan Peterson. And my purpose uh, is to convert both Zizek and Peterson to cultural Hegelianism, which is some sort of a new religion, which is also a very old religion, actually. So, yeah. Um, if I had to define them, I will put the link to the video that I've just made to give the broad philosophical introduction to the debate. But uh, if I had to define them, I would say that Zizek is the psychoanalyst of God and that Peterson is the psychologist of God. Uh, that will become clearer uh, later. Uh, so I begin commenting on a chronological order um, and, and Peterson uh, began talking and said that he was inspired by Nietzsche, Dostoevsky and Carl Jung. And I once had an idea that if you could know the, the most important books or the most important authors um, for an individual, you would understand everything about this, this person because a book is um, a, a condensation. I don't know if it's an English word. In, in a book, the greatest ideas of an author are condensed um, and a book is full of ideas. So it's a, a spiritual entity, although it's made of ink and paper or an electronic book, but the, the spiritual content is concentrated. So men have their, um, their spiritual uh, substance in their favorite books. And that's why it's such a, a crime to burn a, a book because you are burning the, the spirit of, of a person when you do that. So, uh, yeah, the most influential thinkers uh, for Peterson are Nietzsche, Dostoevsky, and Carl Jung. And I know broadly the ideas of these men. Uh, Nietzsche, in my view, uh, if I'm honest, I would say that he's the most comical uh, philosopher ever. Nietzsche is to Hegel within Nietzsche's view what Dionysus is to Apollo. And uh, Nietzsche suffered a lot, but he was very profound, very spiritual, and very comical also. Uh, Dostoevsky in Crime and Punishment um, teaches us that when, when consciousness sins, an, an inner divine spark within consciousness uh, wishes to to find redemption by seeking punishment and that to, to be punished for one's own sins is the way to redemption. So that's a very profound idea. And Carl Jung is um, a psychological, <coughs> psychoanalytical uh, view of Hegel's philosophy in a way. He, he's um, yeah, he's a profound thinker. I've not read many of his books, but I get the broad picture. Uh, uh, Peterson reminds us that his book, Twelve Rules for Life, is a global bestseller. And in my view, if a book is successful, it is because it embodies what uh, people call the zeitgeist. It appears at a certain moment because the social, economic, cultural, uh, philosophical conditions have made it um, appear. So, um, yeah. Uh, then Z, uh, Peterson talks about Karl Marx and the Communist Manifesto. Um, he says that according to Marxist, uh, history is the, the history of class struggle and economic struggle and uh, a hierarchical struggle and uh, from a historical point of view 
we find in Lothrop Stoddard, uh, an American journalist of the early 20th century, the idea that the rise of, of, of modern biology, of Darwinian biology, kind of refuted Marxist ideas because biology teaches us that organism have a, a will to power and a will to 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 dominate others so that um, equality within nature is kind of impossible because each organism and human beings are organisms seek to to dominate others and to to uh, to impose his own will onto others so uh, equality uh, is is impossible and the reason why Peterson is um, kind of despised by the radical left is because he make these uh, controversial ideas public and the reason why he's despised by the radical right is because according to them he doesn't go far enough so Peterson is a tormented individual because he's torn apart between uh, the radical left and the radical right who despise him and at the same time he's kind of admired by by conservatives but also by moderate leftists who may not approve of everything he says but they kind of respect him nonetheless so um peterson is a conflicted individual and that's the reason why he's so profound because he has to uh to think in the middle of a complex uh, situation and uh yeah i will put the link of a song because cultural hegelianism is an idea that uh, modern pop music helps one understand uh, the world so I will put a link to the song survival by Eminem and if you feel in the mood you, you can listen to it and if we are honest <laughs> uh, modern sociobiology and modern psychology uh, shows us through statistical analysis that the, the the distribution of intelligence, what we call IQ, uh, is a bell curve and that uh, people are unequal in terms of intelligence. And if social status is partly, not totally, but partly and significantly determined by intelligence, and if people are born uh, unequal from an intellectual standpoint, then economic equality is impossible. And this idea is, is, is coming into consciousness through various authors like Charles Murray and others like Richard Lynn and, and uh, Heiner Rindermann and, and, and others. In the realm of psychology, it is becoming more and more obvious that human beings are not born equal in the terms of intelligence and the, the debate uh, especially in America is to question whether uh, intelligence is inherited or environmentally determined and um, some say that uh, everything is environmental some say that it is genetic but uh, the whole problem of of the left and the right is that if uh, intelligence is a product of environment, if you want to equalize intelligence in order to give uh, equal access of opportunity, uh, one must uh, implement a, a totalitarian state who would control the nurture of every citizen in order to equalize his intelligence. So uh, equality of outcome in the economic realm is impossible but equality of opportunity although it's an idea that many endorse because it seems very nice it's very difficult and if one wanted to fully equalize equality of opportunity one would have to create a totalitarian state who would uh, shape the environment of, um, of, of, of all its citizens and there's an idea in a book by Gerhard Meisenberg in The Image of God in which he says that uh, if uh, 
the United States decided to, to create a society in which the environment uh, would be equal for all, um, then all the differences in intelligence would be genetic. And he envisioned the possibility that China might implement a, a eugenic or a, a genetic totalitarian state in order to equalize the genetic uh, faculties of, of its population. And then all the differences in intelligence would be environmental. So there are these, these two aspects. Uh, and a conflict between the left and the right in the modern day is a conflict produced by, by the development of psychology and sociobiology because more and more uh, the psychological findings teach us that equality uh, between human beings is, is not possible in the realm of nature. So that's a problem. Uh, Peterson notices that human beings struggle with themselves, uh, with the malevolence that's inside themselves. And human beings are made in the image of God. And, and God is a, a conflicting being who struggles against himself and who has malevolent tendency within himself. So, yeah. He says that there are psychological warfares within human beings, uh, that the struggle for life uh, is, is harsh in the natural world. Uh, so he's kind of a realist, and that's the reason why he's praised on the right and, and disliked on the left. And um, he, in the, in the process of world spirit becoming conscious of itself, he's a moment, he is the moment when controversial ideas are made public and, and, and widespread through the mediation of a respectable individual, which is uh, the most dangerous way of spreading controversial ideas. Because when a crazy lunatic spreads controversial ideas, no one listens to him. In the fringe, far-right circles, no one cares about their crazy ideas. But when a gentleman, a respectable person, spreads controversial ideas, they have a wider, broader um, view. So that's why Peterson is, 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 is a, a complex figure. Uh, he says that hierarchies are the most efficient way of distributing resources uh, yeah. uh, then he talks about the Marxist view of the struggle between proletariat and bourgeoisie and from a logical standpoint the proletariat is the negative of the bourgeoisie and in Hegel's logic the negative and the positive are in a, a conceptual unity and one is what it is to the extent that it is not what it is not. So, to make things intelligible, in the view of Karl Marx, a proletarian is, is a proletarian to the extent that he's not a bourgeois. And a bourgeois is a, is a proletarian to the extent that he's not a, um, a proletarian. So, one cannot think of one without thinking about the other. And that's why the purpose of, of Marxism was not only to abolish the bourgeoisie, but also to abolish the proletariat, because Marx uh, was a, a, a dialectical thinker, and he understood that. So the purpose of communism was to, be, to go beyond proletariat and bourgeoisie. Uh, yeah. Uh, he says that uh, the modern Marxist view divides uh, people into identity groups uh, and that all the evils are attributed to one group. So the left blames evil on the racist right. The right blames evil on the, the socialist um, the socialist left or on the Jews, 
uh, or on the, the Marxists. And so they are in a reciprocal um, process of accusing one another of, of being evil. And uh, that's a, a dialectical process. Uh, then he talks about the capital, the capitalist who owns the means of production but we are confronted by oh, a dialectical process in the sense that in the west i speak of what i know uh broadly the the more socialist people are the wealthy the wealthy which is known in economics the more wealthy and successful a business or an individual is the more he wants to prevent his competitors from uh, outshining him in a way. So when a capitalist becomes successful up to a certain point, he transforms into a socialist because he wants to control the economy and to prevent his competitors from uh, surpassing him. So that's an idea that I understood by becoming familiar with American literature is that in the modern West, the socialists are the wealthy elites who manipulate the people by telling them that socialism is for the people, but the capitalists, that's an idea which is difficult to understand, but the capitalists, at least in America, are the common folk and, and they are struggling against these wealthy uh, elites who want to control the economy and, and, and to steal the money from the workers. and. The, 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 the ethos, the ethic of the worker, at least in the American world, is on the side of the common folk who are the, the proponents of capitalism. So, uh, the socialist accused the capitalist of stealing the labor of the workers and, and the capitalist accused the socialist of stealing the work of the, la of, of the workers. So, they, they are in a reciprocal uh, dialectical process of reciprocally accusing one another. And the idea that the common folk, the common businessman, the small craftsman, the small uh, bookkeeper, uh, the, the small owner of a shop or, or a baker or, or a mechanics or whatever, any small business uh, is better off with capitalism than with socialism. It's an idea which is difficult to understand because we've been told that socialism is for the people and capitalism is for the greedy rich. But if you adopt the, others, the other point of view, you understand that socialism is a, is a means for gathering all the resources, for accumulating all the resources for the wealthy and to deprive the poor uh, from creating their own wealth. So it's a, it's a subtle and ambiguous and difficult uh, debate, but in order to have the full picture, which is a Hegelian process, one has to, to listen to both points of view, to both sides of, of the debate. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, there's an idea that we find in Ludwig von Mises. He explains that the reason why so many leftist intellectuals hate capitalism and are resentful of capitalism is because they believe that they are intelligent and they write good books and they are knowledgeable, but they don't have a lot of success. Whereas the, the pop artist who, or the, the, the football player or the basketball player or the singer, in their view, he or she is less intelligent than them, but he has more success. So the leftist intellectuals, the leftist philosophers are resentful and they blame their own failure and the success of those that they believe are less um, worthy of being successful than them on, on the ills of capitalism. And Mises understood that very well. That's the reason why there are so many leftists highly intelligent, privileged leftists who are Marxist or socialists. Uh, I, I wrote that each man is his own capitalist because each man owns his own 
body and his own mind. Although, strictly speaking, all bodies and all minds belong to God, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I wrote that so the capitals. That's a dialectical process that up to when when the wealth and the power uh, transcends a certain measure, the capitalist, the successful capitalist, turns into a socialist and wants to impl implement uh, a totalitarian uh, state domination in order to 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 control every aspect of economic life. Uh, so he talks about an absurd centralization as opposed to individual freedom. Uh, so we have this conflict between the left and the right, which is a conflict that exists within God himself, between the will to centralize and to control everything and the will to be free. But to be free means to be responsible. And many people love freedom, but with freedom comes responsibility and one has to be responsible for one's own failures. And that's why uh, many people don't like freedom. They want the state to take care of everything because they can put the blame on the state. And that's the reason why in Soviet Russia in the 60s, 70s, 80s, life was kind of mediocre. But people had a certain sense of satisfaction in the sense that uh, life was mediocre but they could put the blame on, on on the Soviet state so that was a means to to help the people psychologically to say that's the the fault of the bureaucracy and that's the reason why some people in Soviet Russia are nostalgic of the, the Soviet era because it gave them a sense of psychological satisfaction in spite of the difficulties of existence. Uh, <coughs> I wrote that socialism, the idea of a central plan of a, of a, a controlled economy, economy from above can only work if God is the central planner. Uh, then I talked about, he, he's not mentioned in the debate, but Ludwig von Mises talked about destructionism the idea that the socialists, consciously or unconsciously, seek to, to destroy the economic efficiency of, of, of the productive forces by implementing uh, laws and legislation and, and to control and to prevent the free creativity of the individuals and that their, their purpose or the consequences of their actions is to, to, to destroy the wealth so there is a tendency within the human psyche to, which is obvious, but to, to seek a psychological well-being in the form of a sense of belonging and equality above material wealth. There are some people who would ra rather be poor in, in difficult uh, economic circumstances, but have a sense of equality than being um, unequal in wealth. So the human being is a, is a complex creature because he's kind of, not never, but he's rarely satisfied. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peterson uh, quotes Dostoevsky who says that uh, we were built for trouble uh, because we were made in the image of God, and God is a, a troubled uh, entity, a very complex entity. And I will put the link to a song by Taylor Swift, uh, Trouble, because that's part of the process of cultural Hegelianism, is to illustrate um, ideas by using music and, and, and music from, from modern pop culture. And uh, he mentions also uh, Schumpeter. He did, not, he did not name Joseph Schumpeter, but he talks about a creative destruction. Uh, 
and there's this this Hegelian idea that uh, to to create is to negate because to create means to bring into being something out of nothing so to create means to negate nothingness in order to bring forth something and creativity is kind of destructive in a way and um, yeah that's very complex but yeah I will stop there for now I will continue uh, I'm in the middle of uh, Peterson's uh, speech and I just co commented and gave my view on on uh, on, on the ideas developed so my, if I had to summarize, I would say that uh, in order to, to arrive at truth, uh, one has to adopt opposite points of view. And the reason why this debate was so great is that it, it confronted the point of view of a right-wing conservative, one might say, for lack of a better definition. It's, it's too re re reductive to, to, to say that Peterson is, is a right-wing conservative, but uh, an individual leaning on the right with an individual leaning on the left. But it's too too simple to say that because Zizek is, is not a liberal leftist and, and Peterson is is not strictly a right winger, so they are complex personalities. But uh, the, the the purpose is to, in order to arrive at truth, one must think about how the various point of views are opposed to one another, and how looking through the eyes of the other enables one to understand oneself. And uh, yeah, I will stop there for now. I will continue in another video.